magnify you and we glorify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we are in Acts 18. Paul is on his journey. Who has their map? Who has their map? I know. Look at the Bible. I have been in my Bible. But so many people use my Bible, they take it out. This might be it. Look at God. He's a provider. <laughs> they take it out my Bible. So you have your map. Where were we just at with Paul in what city? The big city. No, yeah, it was the capital city. We left the big city. We were in Athens. Yeah, and Paul was moving on. Do we see Athens on the map? I don't let me see. Uh Thessalonica, Philippi. Athens, right here. Okay. Y'all see Athens? And where does he go after Athens? We about to find out. He's going to Corinth. Corinth. Now, in my own personal Bible study, my own personal devotion, um, I don't read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation straight through. I read in chronological order, and I've been doing that for the last maybe five years. And I really enjoy the chronological order because when, when I'm reading Acts, uh, you get to a certain point, and then it takes you to the letter of, of Galatians. Then it, you read some more, you read all the Galatians, you go back to Acts, you read some of Acts, and it takes you to the letter of Corinth, right? Mm -hmm. And I really like that because it's actually reading it in the chronological order in which it's occurring in Acts, which is the history of the church, and then it gives you the perspective of what he's writing about in regards to uh, what happens at the church, right? So remember, he wrote about the, Galatia, the, uh, the, the people in Galatia, maybe around 12, 13, because they were talking about circumcision. And then when you get to the book of Galatia, he's literally writing an entire letter about um, them being free in Christ, right? So I really enjoy that type of chronological order in which I read. So we are at Corinth. Um, and Paul, what is Paul? What is Paul's whole mission as he's moving along around this circle? What's his whole mission? To get the letter to the different places about the new, about the circumcision. To get, get the letter there. And he has a primary message, which is what? The gospel. The gospel. What is it? What is the gospel Paul preaches? Uh, that's it. That, that's the gospel. It's pure and simple. He's getting the letter out, building doctrine of the church. But his, the primary gospel in which he's preaching is the gospel of Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection. And he is on the circuit. And Thessalonica is a huge port city, right? We know Thessalonica. And he did not do well in Thessalonica. As a matter of fact, they lied on him. Jason had to pay a fee. They pushed him out. He ends up going to um, Berea. He goes to Berea. He lives in Berea. Then he goes to Athens. And now he's leaving Athens. And he's on the circuit. And he's going to Corinth. Corinth, if you have not read the book, the epistle of Corinth, oh, it is, listen, if you think Jerry Springer was something, if you think Maury was something, you got to read the book of Corinth because Paul lays it out for them. So we are in chapter 8, Acts 18, starting at verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. And if you have the map, you see where Athens is. Right across there is a, like a, maybe a peninsula, not a peninsula, but um, some water right between um, Athens and you cross the water and you're over in Corinth and you see the map. So he's traveling and as he travels, he's carrying this gospel. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. Let's stop right there. He meets two people. Who does he meet? Aquila and Priscilla. And I want you, because I, I, I used to read the Bible as a child, and I used to be like, these two women? No. Aqu 
Aquila is the husband, Priscilla is the wife. Right? I was a little kid reading the Bible out of context, but I want you to know in Facebook world, because I'm sure everyone in here knows, Aquila is the husband, Priscilla is the wife. But what was their religion? Why is that important? Why is that important? That they are Jews. Because who was Paul? He was a Jew. Who was Paul? He was a Jew. Paul was a Jew. Yeah, he was a Pharisee. Paul was a Jew. And he, he encounters people from... So I'll give you an example. I love the movie Gone with the Wind. I just watched it this week. I watch it at least three times in a year. I love Gone with the Wind. And when um, Scarlett O'Hare goes to Atlanta, she sees Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy um, owns this store. And she says, and not, not her, but Mammy, who's played by um, Hattie McDaniel, she says, it's good to see folks from home because Mr. Kennedy was from down terror where they were from. Um, that's what's happening here. They, they, he's encountering people who have been socialized like him, although they might not be from the same area, because it says they're from where? They were from where? Where? Pontus. Pontus, which is where? Italy. Italy. They're Pontus, Italy. Where's Paul from? Tarsus. Tarsus is where? Yeah. Mediterranean. So different areas, right? But they share the same identity as what? Jews. As Jews. As Jews. So he found a certain Jew, a quill of the husband, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that who was Claudius? He is the emperor. Which means he, he what? What? The emperor. What was the emperor? What's the authority of the emperor? Makes the laws, I guess. I don't know. Well, he doesn't make the laws. Senate would make the laws, but he is the... Governor. He's the governor. He's government. Yes, not governor. Government. He's the king. He's the, he's the god, right? He's the god, right? Claudius commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. And Rome is in what country? Italy. Italy, which is where they're from. So why is Claudius making an edict to make the Jews leave from Rome? Why? Because they, uh, once they find out about the, the new, the letter and they'll start spreading Christianity? I don't know. <laughs> no, but that was the answer. Why would Paul want, not Paul, why does Claudius want the Jews, we are in Acts chapter 18, want the Jews to leave Rome? But they're Jews. They don't believe in Jesus. Yet Claudius exiles the Jews. But the Jews don't believe in Jesus. Some of them do. Well, they, well, they will. But, but yeah, he's putting he's putting the Jews out wide. Jews got there. They got there because of their disobedience. 
and they ended up being exiled, and then they lived in the diaspora. So they lived some in Syria. So you remember Nehemiah? You remember Nehemiah? And he, you know he had to ask permission of the king Artaxerxes, and we can go back. Then he asked for we need trees from your land because they're exiled. They are exiled because of their disobedience. So these are still part of the exilic Jews who live in, in live apart out of Jerusalem. But the seat of power for Rome, I mean, for the Roman government is Rome. Rome is the Washington, D.C. Rome is federal city. And here you have Jews whose entire religion revolves around a God that is not Claudius. I need to get you out of here. So he, he, puts, in, he puts an edict. And he makes them, again, they are exilic, so he's moving them away. Listen, go, go to Jerusalem, fine. Go, go to Greece, fine. But you can't be here in the seat of the Roman power and you talk about there's another God. So that's, that, so Claudius makes that edict. And, they, and, and part of that edict is that Aquila and Priscilla have to pack up and go. So they leave. And because he was of some craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. So now what did they do? What did Aquila and Priscilla do? Took their business and left. They packed up their hymn books and Bibles and they left. And, and Paul encounters them because remember what I said? You know, they're, he's like, these home folk, they're Jews. Let me talk to them. Let me get to know them. He meets them, he encounters them. And because he was because he was of the same craft. So what does this tell us about Paul? It says because he was of the same craft, he stayed, because he had the same job, he stayed with them. And because they their occupations were to make. Paul is bivocational. What is his vocation? He's a tent maker. That's, that's what we can glean from this text. He's a tent maker. He's bivocational. This is going to be important when it comes to is it the church of Corinth in which Paul tells them that I've never asked you all for anything, right? This is important. This is important because Paul says, I have given more to you all that you have given to me. And he said, and this is in the beginning of, I think, first Corinthians. He said, and I'm glad that I didn't baptize none of y'all except for Christmas and another one. Um, Paul makes his money making tents. Paul not only makes his money making tents, Paul is not, Paul is a, is a bivocational pastor, one. He's a pastor who wants to see his flock continue to grow. So he pours into the ministry of his flock. He pours into the ministry of his members because he wants to see them grow. And he finds these two people who are like-minded of him, who have the same craft as him, and they begin to bond. They begin to bond. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath of the toys of the Jews and the Greeks. Why is that important? Verse number five, why is verse five, I mean verse number four, why is verse four important? Because that's his custom. That's his custom. Say more. Um, and, you know, to the Jew, I mean, to the Jew first and then to the, to the Greeks. Um, he want to give, uh, well, Said he gonna go to the um, the Gentiles, but he always wanted he he just want he wanted the, the Jews to be uh, to be saved. Uh, okay, go ahead. Typically, when you witness to a non-Jew, you start with the creation. So when you witness to a Jew, you can go to the scriptures or the Old Testament. That's a good point. Mm. That you start with, if it's a non you start with creation. How does he approach talking to the Athenians? Previous chapter. Creation. He started with, you all have this, this great temple of the unknown God. He starts with creation. 
But when he talks to the Jew, he starts with the scripture, right? So here he is. He reads it in the synagogue every Sabbath. Who was in the synagogue? Jews. Jews. Are Greeks allowed in the synagogue? They are. <laughs> are they? I don't think the Jews are allowed in the synagogue. So where, so he goes to the synagogue, he preaches there. Where would he be preaching to the Greeks if they're not allowed in the synagogue? In the courtyard. The marketplace. Down by the riverside, marketplace, outside. Right, right. And if they are in the synagogue and they're saying that Jews and Greeks if they are in the synagogue and the assumption is only Jews can be in the synagogue, um, we, and they're in the synagogue, we're going to assume that they're Jewish, but they're still calling them Greeks because they, if that is the case, if that is the case, we're going to assume if they are, if the Greeks are in the synagogue that they have converted to Judaism. We're going to assume that it's not in the text, but that would be the only way that they would be allowed in the synagogue, and if that is the case. They still are being disrespected by being called what? Greeks. Greeks, if that is the case. We don't know. But we know the law says who was not allowed in the synagogue. That's all. Yes. Let's process it. What were you going to say? I was, well, more or less, the synagogue was kind of like the local church, but the temple was where uh, the feast and the Passovers that they had to go there because it was too many Jews. And that's where I thought the Jews were not allowed because the, the, there was supposed to be a sign of this bar, the court of women, the court of Gentiles, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But you remember. And I don't know if we've gotten there yet. Maybe in this, this verse 19. He's going to get beat and kicked out of the synagogue again. Paul. And it says the synagogue, right? Mm -hmm. And it says because he has brought strange people. Yeah. Into, into this space, which is sacred. Okay. But it might be. It might be. Yeah. Maybe some on who can go where. <laughs> and that's very law oriented. Okay. And even the Jews in exile are under the law. Um, and even when they're under the law, it's, they're still obligated to do whatever they're doing in Jerusalem. There's an obligation, even, even when they are in, um, uh, where were they with? With Nehemiah, um, and it was Syria. It was in, in, in the day, Persia, the Persian, right? They still have these laws that they have to abide by. And if you don't abide, with, with, this is the issue with the law. If you don't abide by the law, what happens? Well, we get punished, but yeah, we get punished. And there is no grace with the law. This is the law, and the law, the whole purpose of the law is to lead you to. Grace, right? So, what we know is he's keeping his custom. And his custom is to do what? Go to the synagogue. Go to the synagogue. And when he goes to the synagogue, what is he talking about? Christ. Christ the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about a man. And he tells him about a man. And we get to verse number five. Uh, and persuaded, he's trying to persuade the Jews and the Greeks because what does Romans 10 and 1 reminds us that Paul desires to what? That all Israel will be saved. Right? Verse number 5, when the Cyrus and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit 
and testify to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. He's going to preach that gospel of Jesus being the Christ wherever he goes under all circumstances. And when they come from Macedonia, Macedonia is actually where the church at Philippi is. I'm looking for it on this map. Oh, it's up north, right. So Macedonia is up north because the church of Philippi is in Macedonia, right? And Paul pressed in the spirit, pressed in the what? In the who? The spirit. Why is that important? Why is why is it important that it says Paul pressed in the spirit? Because the spirit is is part of is part of the, the Trinity. The spirit is part of the Trinity. Why else? Um, I think it's, he's he's the one that's that's guiding Paul. Mm -hmm. The that's spirit Paul. is guiding Paul. Because you remember when he goes on the first show, it said he was led by the Spirit. He's not going on his own. Mm -hmm. He's not moving on his own accord. You know, he wanted to go. He wanted to go preach where? You remember this? He wanted to go preach in Spain. Remember that? And, the, and he wanted to go preach in Rome. And the Spirit said what? No. So he's not going on his own. He's not doing, he's not talking on his own. It is not for his own vain glory for which he goes into the synagogue, for which he goes into the marketplace, for which he goes to speak to these people. But it's because he's led of the Holy Spirit. And what, how does that imply, apply and imply to us as believers in 2024? The same should be said for us. Mm -hmm. And how we move specifically um, from an evangelistic standpoint. So we should be led by the Spirit. The Spirit. The Spirit. Led by the Spirit in some things? Oh. What does that look like? Practically. What does it practically look like to be led by the Spirit in all things? A lot of prayer. It requires a lot of prayer. What else? Grace. Faith. Faith, Faith. grace, mercy. mercy. All of them. We just gonna name all the fruits of the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Who? How do you grow? How does one grow in the spirit? A lot of sense to remember the word. Prayer. Studying God's word. Obeying, that's why we saw what him did we sing today? Trust and obey. Uh, it requires that we fast. Yes. Mm -hmm. It requires us to engage spiritual discipline, right? Not just reading the text, but what the Psalm 1 tells us to do? Meditate, Meditate on the word. Yes. Do word, you know, let the word in, in, impact our hearts, right? When, we're, when you talk about walking in the spirit, it is a, the spirit is an antithesis to your flesh. Amen. And your flesh does not want you to do what the spirit will tell you to do. Because it's not going to make your flesh feel comfortable. Well, he, it, when, when it says that he was and was pressed in the spirit, that meant Paul is literally living through the Spirit. Fasting, praying, searching scripture, right? He, you, if you're going to be able to make these arguments before people, you have to, one, know the word for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is so important in 2024 that we know the word for ourselves because uh this is the time where itching ears are really itching. Amen. And sound doctrine is not being preached or taught. And if you don't know the word for yourself, we all can be carried away unto idols and to unto, unto all kinds of foolishness. Amen. But if we are in the, in the word, washing ourselves in the word, growing in the word, 
Be led by the Spirit. A Spirit-led life is a blessed life, but it's also a life that will make you feel like you're alone because not a lot of people are walking in the Spirit. Right. It, it, it can be lonely. It is. Okay, it is lonely. <laughs> it is, seriously. It is. And people, so I was at the National Convention last, year, last week. The, the theme scripture was 1 Peter 2, 2 and 9. But don't you know that you are a holy people, a, a royal priesthood, uh, uh, a chosen generation? That was the theme scripture, right? Heard and preached all week. And in that, it talks about being the elect. Right before, it talks about being the elect. But in being a spirit-led person, it might, it will make you feel like you're alone. And it will make people look at you like you're crazy. Like, they weird. Why are they acting like that? You know, why, why they? Why you got to bless your food every time you eat? Or, or how come you have to say, let me pray over it before you do anything? Or because I don't want to do anything that the Holy Spirit is not leading me to do. Or leading me to go. Or, or telling me I'm supposed to be a part of. That requires being in the spirit. Paul was in the spirit. And he testified to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ, which is the gospel that he is always preaching. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own head. I am clean for henceforth. I will go unto the Gentiles. What happened? Verse number six, what happened? Where is this language also heard? Um, Jesus, Jesus is in the um, uh, disciples are he did preach you know, teach and if you're not walking with dusty dust off of you. I think it's Matthew 11. Let me look at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see. 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 Yes, Matthew. He chooses the twelve, then he sends them out. Matthew ten verses five. These twelve Jesus sent forth that commanded them, saying, "Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritans, did ye not? But ye go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand." Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purse, nor strip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor ye staves, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in, the, who in it is worthy, and thereby till ye go thence. And then ye come into a house saluted. And if the house be worthy, let your fleece come upon you. Come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your word, when you depart out of this house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Now that was Matthew 10, 5 through 15. Now let's go back to Acts chapter 18, verse 6. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his reign. And said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go into the Gentiles. When Jesus sends them out, well, who does Jesus send them to? He sends them to Israel. He sends them to Israel. And he tells them what to do. And he says that you tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then what did he say? He says, salute them. And if, 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 they, if they salute you, then the peace return, we return to the house. But if they don't salute you, what are you supposed to do? Take your peace. Hit the road, Jack. <laughs> Take your peace with you. And dust the, you know, deacon. But, now, remember, God did send Paul to that synagogue, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a purpose for it. Mm -hmm. Although the uh, leaders or the king or whoever, uh, you know, didn't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. uh, he preached anyway, right? He preached. He preached. And so... Because that's why they don't want to hear it. Somebody he was converted. Okay. Don't you think somebody was converted? We're going to get to that. 
But we just dealing with verse number six right now. Okay. He preached. They don't want to hear it. And what does he do? He follows the example. Now, he's talking to his wife. He says, the Lord, she, but then he's talking to them. You remember, I wish Kip was here. I wish this Kip was here. You remember what God tells Saul, tells um, Ananias that Saul has to do? What was it? Saul must do something. Suffer. Suffer. Mm. He must suffer for the sake of the gospel. Here, he, he sent him to the Jews. He know the Jews. The Jews ain't going to hear him. Who the Jews going to listen to? The law. <laughs> the law, but who, which disciple or which apostle are the Jews going to listen to? Peter. 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 So he's going to the Gentiles. He says, look, I've done my part. He, sh he shaked the dust from my feet, right? And he says, your blood be upon your own head. Why does he say that? I'm clean. Let me say it. Why, blood on your hand. I'm clean from henceforth. Because we're obligated to tell and whether they believe or not. Actually, if we don't tell, we're guilty. Who said, who did he, which prophet did he tell that to? Ooh. Ezekiel. He says that to Ezekiel. Right. He tells Ezekiel, Listen, you just preach what I tell you to preach. And they don't listen, that's on them. But if you don't preach it, it's on you. And Saul and Paul, rather, Paul has preached it and he shared the gospel. And again, that gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection. And he said, I, listen, I'm keeping the commandment that our Savior has taught us, left on record. I've told you, I've done my job. You don't want to hear it. I'm shaking my raiment or my clothes. I, my hands are clean and I will take this gospel to the ones whom you do not believe are going to be able to be saved, which are the Gentiles. And he leaves and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. I want somebody to read that in, I think this is King James. I want that read in English standard. Anybody got English standard? I do. I got it. Okay. Well, oh, that's good. So I want to hear both of them. Verse number seven. Okay. And he left there and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus. Yes. Um, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Okay. That's good. What does yours say, Sister Thompson? Just verse seven. Yes. Paul left. So, he leaves the church, or the synagogue, and he goes where? Next door. Next door. It says the man lives next door. That's what all the translations say. King James says it says um, Vince. So, he goes next door. He And whose house does he go to? Justice. Justice. Tidious. 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 Tidious justice. And what does, how does he describe him? We'll call him TJ. Okay. <laughs> he was a who? A worshiper of who? The, the, God, the, the true, true God. God. The true God. Now, who is this? Who is this Tidious justice or TJ? He lived in Corinth. He lived amongst people who, who worshiped I am God, and some worship the Lord our God, right? Who else is it? A neighbor. <laughs> a neighbor to the synagogue. Did he go to the synagogue? It doesn't say that, but... Well, you know, if he worships a true God, then he's a he Christian. He worships a true God. Okay. That, hold on, that's a good point. Do you all remember when God calls Abram? Is it... Genesis, well, you hear about him in Genesis 11. He called him in Genesis 12. What does it say about Abram in Genesis chapter 11? He lived where? He comes from pagans. 
They are not worshiping the, the Lord our God. And he's living amongst people, including his father, who is not worshiping who? The Lord our God, right? But God called Abel. Because who did Abel? What did Abel do? Believed in God. He worshiped. He, what does this say about him? Um, uh, worship God. He worshiped the one and true and living God. Even though he was amongst people who did not. What does that tell us? One about the Holy Spirit and two about salvation. What does that tell us? We're not to be ashamed of the gospel. Well, we're not supposed to be ashamed of the gospel. No matter who you with you or surrounded by, you still supposed to believe in the true God. To any, be a, but how can I how can I believe in the one and only true God if I live around paganism? Stay true to your faith. Confession of faith is how? How do you come to believe? By hearing the word of God. You hear the word of God. You people hear it, but what makes you believe? You convicted. By what? God will invite you. He's a reward of them who diligently seek him. But something makes you believe. Faith. Something gives you that faith. Word of God. Holy Spirit! <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. We are, you are only convicted because the Holy Spirit convicts you. You are only saved. You remember when Peter in Matthew 16, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now I'm sure he's just, it just came to his mouth to say that. What did Jesus say? Flesh and, blood could not reveal Flesh and blood could not have revealed that to you. But my father who was in heaven. Because we are saved of the Holy Spirit. Abram, and understand the, Holy, the gift of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament is totally different than the manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Not everybody got the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. David got it. Abram got it. Abraham got it. Uh, we know Moses got only certain people God revealed himself through that, right? But in the New Testament, when you we all can have the gift of the Holy Spirit if we what? Believe, believe avail ourselves, uh, allow our heart to be open, to harden out our hearts, right? That the Holy Spirit will come in, and when the Holy Spirit comes in, the Holy Spirit does what he does is convicting power. And that's what makes it okay, Lord. I'm a sinner, hold the file, and take the state of sin away, and only as your child, right? That's the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit makes justice is living amongst pagans. He lives next door to the synagogue. I'm sure he wants to go into the synagogue. He is a, a, a citizen of Corinth, he lives his life worthy. The Holy Spirit convicts him. That's verse number seven, right? One that worshiped God who house was right next door to the synagogue, right? But it does not happen like this. This does not happen by osmosis, right? Just because you live next door to the church does not mean you're going to be saved, <laughs> right? Right. Right. It, there, it's, the, it's the Holy Spirit 
It is you availing yourself to the Holy Spirit. It's you availing yourself to know more about the Lord. All of that comes into how justice, who, who ends up being a, a, a good brother for, for Paul. For Paul, yeah, Paul, I'm about to say peace for Paul. And let's move on. And Christmas, the chief ruler of the synagogue, who was Christmas? Chief ruler of the synagogue. He, he was the chief ruler. He, what did he do? Read, read that text for me. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And you also say more than that? Uh, and many, Christ, uh, many of the Corinthians hearing Paul believed and were baptized. What did you say earlier, Stephen Sparks? Yeah. What did you say earlier? I said some of them were saved. Uh, some of them were convicted. Yeah, you said some of them were saved. Who? Kings What does this text say? <laughs> what does this say? <laughs> <laughs> number eight. Oh, I don't have my dad. Okay, Christmas, the ruler of the synagogue, he believed. Right. Now, <laughs> it would be like Deacon Andrews goes into Kingdom Hall mm -hmm. and he explains the gospel. Verse by verse, based off of Jesus Christ, some of the living God, da, da, da. not even kidding him let's say he goes into a, a mosque. That would be a better example, mosque. And he says, Jesus is Christ, the son of the living God, and he died for your sins, and he rose on the third day, that you might be able to inherit the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven is coming back, and he's coming back for believers. Deacon Andrews does that. What are they going to do to think of Andrews? They kick him out. <laughs> they throw him they out. They're going to stone him. <laughs> they throw him out. Okay, we don't want it. And then Andrews said, fine. Wash my hands of this. I'll go to, i go to another, i go to the Hindus. Right. Go to another set of people. He leaves, goes right next door <laughs> to, the, to the mosque. He finds a believer in Jesus Christ right next door to the mosque. But the imam of the mosque what happens to the imam of the mosque? He's converted. He's converted. Not just him, but who else? His house. His whole house. They're converted simply because of what? Paul's preaching. Paul preaching what? The gospel. The gospel. Simply because Paul preached the gospel. And they, they, they availed themselves to hear it and to not hear it to respond, but hear it to process and to take it in, right? And what does the Holy Spirit do? Y'all been saying it all. Convicts them. Convict them. God's holy prosecutor. Yeah. Convicts them. And what do they do? They are saved. That's verse number eight. They are saved. They believe in the Lord together with his entire household. And then what else does that verse say? Many of the Corinthians hearing Paul believed and were baptized. Now, you might be, use evangelism as an example. We all are called to be evangelists. Evangelists. You might go up and down the street, up and down Kismet, every Saturday, sharing the gospel, and you're like, Lord, these folks ain't listening to me. Lord, why am I out here doing this? Lord, this is just, I'm wasting my time. You don't know. Amen. How they will be convicted by that. You don't know. I'm, t I'm, I'm getting, this is real. Real is real. That you give them a trap, they put it in their pocket, they forget it's in their pocket, they go on about their day, they get, they go home, they uh, reach in their pocket, they pick out, oh, this is that thing, and it catches their attention, and they start reading, and little by little, and they're convicted. And the Holy Spirit. And you may never know how 
you simply sharing the gospel, mm -hmm. right, is, is going to be transformative in the lives of other people. Paul, Paul literally is like, I'm willing to face persecution, prosecution, I'm willing to face famine, I'm willing to face pestilence, even death, for the sake of this gospel. I'm going to share the gospel no matter what. Why am I going to share the gospel? Because I know the power the gospel has. How do you know that, Paul? Because I was riding on my beast, my beast and I was on my way to persecute the church. And he knocked me off my beast, and I heard a voice they could not see. We didn't know where it came from, but that convicted me, and I was transformed. And I know the feeling of that transformation, and I know the power that the gospel has. That is why we share the gospel. That is why we share the good news. Because it's transformative. And Crispus, who is the, 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 the ruler of that synagogue, he believes, and not just him, but a lot of people in Corinth believe because they heard the gospel. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by vision, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. What God tell him? To continue to... Keep preaching the gospel. And that's why I want to tell, you, tell us. Keep sharing the gospel. Because the gospel is transformative. Amen. The gospel can change people. Keep telling people about Jesus the Christ. If we give a lot of anecdotal stuff in regards to evangelism, I want to push us that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. And he died and he rose the third day because he loved you and he wants to save you from sin. All the other anecdotal stuff, we can add that in. But the gospel needs to be that. What'd you say? He died for our sins. He died for our sins. That's the, that's the full gospel. And God assures him. He says, in a dream, in a vision, don't be afraid. Why do you think God would be telling Paul not to be afraid? Because he was scared. He might have been scared. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, who who would not who would not be scared? Paul. Well, he he obviously was scared. Sometimes. <laughs> Listen, he, he yeah. said the Lord does not give me the spirit of fear. Maybe at what point he had the spirit of fear. I don't know. He is still human. He is human. Yeah, he's human. He assures him. He assures him. Don't be afraid uh, and hold not thy peace. You keep preaching this gospel for I am with you and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee for I have much people in this city. Keep preaching the gospel in Corinth. I have, you remember it was Elijah on Mount Carmel before he gets to Mount Carmel. Lord, I have been zealous for you. I have done this and I have done that for you. And Lord, I am the only one that has not bowed my knee to Baal. Oh, and what did God tell him? I got 7,000 7, and they bowed to Baal. You're not, you're not the lone rage. God is telling him, telling Paul, listen, I have many people in this city. Don't be afraid. Keep preaching the gospel. Don't let don't let the synagogue stop you. Don't let the Jews stop. Don't let the Roman government stop you. Preach the word. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God amongst them. He didn't tell them he wasn't going to suffer no more, though. No. <laughs> just here. Just like the rim. <laughs> he said, I he said, I'm with you. No man shall set on thee to hurt thee. You might not be hurt, but yeah. His first promise to him was he going to suffer for this gospel. <laughs> right. You're going to suffer. 
And maybe your and maybe your suffering might not come in Corinth, but oh, you got to keep going on these journeys. You gonna sure. suffer. Sure. So this might be a respite for you, but you gonna suffer for this gospel. All right, all right. That is all I have for today. Um, I'm glad and grateful that you all have been with us today in Bible study, in person or virtually. We 